In order to keep you thinking ahead for the future, we're putting on hold all the turmoil we're hearing about in the mainstream news and all the hypocrisy and gaslighting they're doing in this country right now. To let you know that a system is in place or a system is waiting in the wings that's completely incompatible with your individual liberty, with your autonomy, with your Western Judeo-Christian values, your agency. All of that is waiting for you. It's the very system being advanced by the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, governments around the world, and their legions of useful idiots under the guise of sustainable development, saving the environment, reducing inequality. Countless naive people have been suckered into this. Now, we know that we all want to be sustained. We, we want sustainability. But this is the underlying pretext behind the international agreements we've heard about, Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, basically a warmed-over version of the technocracy. Now, with the World Economic Forum talking about the reset, they're just coming right out and hitting you with the, with the ham slammer, saying, oh, by the way, we're hitting you on the head here. We're not going to hide it anymore. This is what we want to do. We look back at 2030 agenda. We look back at what they say about the year 2030. They look back at what AOC has said about dying in 10, 12, whatever years. You hear about Bernie Sanders saying the same thing. Now they're saying that once coronavirus is out of the way, once they programmed you into being a, a, a person who's scared like a little sheep, they're going to go back to you again and they're going to say, well, guess what, guys? This 2030 agenda and, and everything that we're doing for the new reset all was loved by the people that you love too, like Obama. Barack Obama loved Agenda 2030. So, therefore, Joe Biden loves Agenda 2030, right? Sustainable control over every single inch of the planet's surface. This full-spectrum control, this is what it is. This is the utopia, the, the age of the Aquarius. The age of Aquarius, nothing less than turning control over all natural resources. To the World Economic Forum, our friends at Davos, and the United Nations. You go all the way back to those plans that were first established in Austria. Another Schwab, Gunther Schwab. You can look him up, Gunther Schwab. I don't know if he's related to Klaus. But Gunther Schwab is who inspired Al Gore to come up with the idea of an inconvenient truth. In fact, I think... Uh, I think that Gunther Schwab was alive when Inconvenient Truth came out because he lived to be like 101, 102 years old. The whole idea has, has, has been seeded with man-made global warming, that hypothesis, serving as an important justification for the advancement of new t technologies. The, the idea of scarcity all pushes for the example of new technologies. Once again, going back to the, 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 global, the global warming thing, Bill Gates, the man who's responsible for funding your vaccines, is now dimming the sun with chemtrails. Something that we were told were conspiracy theories, but now since a philanthropist that we all love is putting clouds in the sky, cooling the planet, it's okay. See, the, the melding of government and corporate power has become ubiquitous around the world. It's no accident. Because what they want is they want to remove control from the people because the politicians and the bureaucrats sign away their rights and responsibilities to corporate interests. And that, my friends, is the true definition of fascism. Because you've got these corporate giants extracting large profits from the taxpayers. And, you know, even while they're doing things that the consumers like or they say they like, this is, this is basically a high-speed rail ride on an out-of-control train into a virtual reality run by 6G where you're all becoming like machines. I mean, it's the, it's the government weaponizing your spirit, weaponizing your soul. That is why it's the great 666, and, and, and everybody's like, you know, it's just, it, it's obvious to me that this is what we're looking at here. We're looking at biotech, fine tech, which is financial technology. We're looking at the blockchain. We're looking at making humanity sustainable 
and and this is how they do it. It's 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 a new financial system. It's a new uh, it's a new system without the legacy systems that we've been counting on for about 30, 40, 50 years. Private capital could be redeployed to finance the goals of the technocrats and their other world order or whatever world orders they want to create, relying on large amounts of documentation, basically put out there by your own chip, okay? Public statements you make. That's why I say it's the whisper that wins now. It's not the freaking bullhorn. Bullhorning and getting attention and doing the signs and wearing your, your Viking outfits and everything doesn't get any attention anymore. You have to bring brotherhoods together. You have to bring together digital playgrounds. You have to take this type of initiative to get the proles to wake up. That's what they said in 1984. And this is what I try to do on my show I mean, we're going to see all kinds of things plotting away, all kinds of people plotting away. A cashless society is another key part of the plan. I mean, if the plotters are successful with this great reset, who's going to be right now ahead of the game? Who's ahead of the game now? It's China, right? China is actually leading the contemporary model and example for what this new reset's going to be about. I mean, academics have already said that mainland China is transformed from communism to Marxism to a technocracy. And despite the remaining outward trappings and the, and the lack of, uh, of human rights, eh, what makes us any different now, right? The Chinese model was first introduced to Agenda 2030 by a man named Sha Kang. You can look all this up. This is stuff that I've talked about in the past. The Chinese model is being spread around the world with key assistance from Western globalists, the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, all of these powerful forces to change us all and to have us give up our physical and spiritual autonomy. One of the crucial elements of the technocracy that is being pioneered by China is the social credit system. This is something that is going to happen here in this country as we censor people who are dissenting voices in the crowd. That's why I'm saying the whisper now has to be used, not the bullhorn, okay? And so people who question government or, or know somebody who questions it will see their social credit scores be marked down, reduced, and your score will determine practically everything, whether... You can borrow money, fly, get an education, leave the country, or whatever. So basically, Beijing is leading the way in developing perhaps the most Orwellian system of control ever devised by man. And once it's fully operational, it will allow the dictatorship to control its subjects without even having to resort to torture, terror, prisons, or executions. You know, sure, they'll happen, but not as much because, you know, what, what is more terrifying is that these schemes and these plans are already being tried in America. We're seeing it all the time. We're seeing government surveillance. We've got smart cities. We've got big data. We've got uh, big tech social media companies and how they can censor and shut down dissenting voices. And eventually the technocratic social credit system, it will be global in scope. And, there, and then, of course, you look at the spiritual component of all this, we have to either worship the technocracy and do show trials to say, well, I had faith in God, but yeah, it's not getting me anywhere. I need scientism. I need the technocrats. I need them. I mean, when they said, oh God, when they said that these terrorists, these terrorists invaded the temple of our democracy, you know what that says about the government now? They believe that they're a priest class. You understand that? When they said that these, and I'm saying terrorists because this is what the media said, now they're gaslighting everybody. When they said that these terrorists invaded the Capitol, the Capitoline Temple to Saturn, when they invaded the temple of our democracy, they immediately made themselves sound like a priest class. They made themselves a priest class, a special technocratic theolo the theology, a political theology that is magically and masterfully applied on our road to technocracy, serving 
an anthropomorphic idol, creating an external savior, which will end up being a snare to everyone who participates in it. You don't understand what I'm saying here. This is very important because when you look at this as what's going on, calling resistance to evil, it's a moral imperative. You need to get involved and remember the whisper now is more important than the bullhorn. You understanding what I'm saying here? You're understanding the beast system and the 666 and what it all means in the greater picture?